I'll just start with the uh, the keys first. You've got your main key, which has got the automatic buttons that unlock the uh, central lock-in. The top one does the front cab, and the bottom one does the side door and the back door. And the one in the centre locks them all. There's a small key which does all the outside lockers and a spare set of keys there comes with it. Got two taps down there. The blue one is the fresh water and the grey one is the grey water. That is how you empty those tanks with those taps. The cassette toilet you have a cassette that comes out with a handle and you can wheel it to empty it. To empty it, you release this cap, point it towards the waist and press this button in here to release the vacuum. That empties out the waist. When you're finished, release the put the cap back on and slide the tank back in. You can if required move this out the way, open that sealed flap and you can put chemical in there or you can swill it out with water if required. This is the gas gas filler where you fill your gas tank which is mounted underneath the vehicle. To fill this, release the cap, attach your filler at your filling station and fill it that way. Fill the tank up, when it's full and the filler stops filling you can check the amount of gas you have in your tank there is a gauge there with LEDs when the engine is running this will indicate how much gas you have in the tank by the amount of LEDs that are illuminated okay okay um, that's your exhaust outlet for your combi boiler uh, there is a safety switch mounted on the window there. If you're running the boiler and you open this window, it will shut the boiler off. That is a safety device. So it must not be disabled. This is where you plug the mains electrics in. Und underneath the floor, uh, underneath the vehicle, the spare wheel is mounted on our carrier. This is the cap. You release this, take the cap off, and you fill the fresh water tank with a hose. There is a gauge inside shows you the amount of water that is in the holding tank. I'll show you that in a minute. This is where you put your diesel fuel in. You need your admission key to open this cap. The blue cap below it is for add blue. Um, there will be an indication come up on the dashboard to show you when you need to fill that up and you need to buy add blue from any garage or DIY store uh, to fill this. <laughs> There's a label there which tells you the tyre pressures. Underneath the front seat here there's a plastic box which contains all the kit to remove the wheel 
and take the spare wheel off the wheel carrier. The jack and all the tyre, the wheel braces are in this box. Just here is how you release the bonnet. Push that, pull that out like that. Release the bonnet catch, lift it up. So you have brakes, coolant, powered steering fluid, oil cap there and the dipstick for checking the oil level is there. There is a little blue cap there for your windscreen washers which you fill up there. So I unlock the side door with the lower button. Switch to put the step in and out that's just there. And you have a light switch there. The control panel is up above your head. Switch the control panel on and off there. That is for all the inner lighting, main circuit. You have switches around the vehicle which you can control the lights with as well. That does the external light. That button there, you press that and it shows you what levels you've got in your batteries and in your water tanks. So you use this, you fill the water tank up to the required level. When you've re uh, reached the required level that you want, just stop filling it. The waste tank will show you the level there. When that's full up or whatever level you want to empty it, you can tell there. You can, you can set the time and everything via this button. Um, which you can read all about in your handbook. This button here controls the water pump. The water pump will not work unless you press that button. It's a pressurized system. So you need to fully fill your water system. Purge it of air. Make sure it's running freely and the pump will pressurise and switch itself off and then when you release the tap it will switch itself on. All the waste that goes down the plug holes here and in the bathroom goes into the waste tank. The toilet goes into the toilet waste tank which you empty from the outside. To winterize the water system, you need to access under this bed. Where the, the drain valve is mounted down there. It's got the little yellow top on it. To drain it, you flick that upwards and the water drains out. Um, to fill it again, you need to flip it down and then you can fill your water system again. That is your combi boiler, which does the blown air heating through these vents and it heats approximately 10 litres of water in there at a time. Your electrics are mounted in this box here. 
you have 12 volt blade fuses in this one this is where your mains electrics trips are those need to be switched left on if you want the charger and the heating to work that is a 12 volt shutdown button it says 12 volt DC shutdown if you need to shut the 12 volt system down if you're putting the vehicle in storage just click that out and everything will be shut down you just have to remember to reinitialize that otherwise you won't be able to use any services inside the vehicle under this bed is a box where your auxiliary battery is to run all the 12 volt systems that is charged from the charger box under the opposite bed and it's charged from a solar panel trickle charged from a solar panel and it's also charged when the engine's running on the vehicle you have a mains lead already under there and an umbrella the beds make up you pull these out both sides pull them together and then you make the bed up with these makeup pieces you just slide all together to make a bed in this locker you have the regulator for the solar panel which is there there is also a switch, a rocker switch which um, on the label there you can select it either for the leisure battery or the vehicle battery so if you want um, your vehicle battery to stay topped up you just click it to your vehicle battery if you want the leisure battery topped up you collect you select that the TV just switches on and off with these controls just press it on it comes on it's already tuned in you don't have to tune the telly in these lights have their their own switches on this is the panel that controls your heating you switch it on press the button until it comes on the first symbol you have is the heating select that and you can select the heat that you can set it on by pressing the button so I will switch that off okay the next one is the hot water select that and you can have it on eco hot or boost so you need, when you tap that button it selects the setting the next one is for the power source which is either gas a mix of gas and one kilowatt electric a mix of gas and two kilowatt electric electric one is just one kilowatt electric two is two kilowatt so I've selected two kilowatt electric okay the next one is the fan speed for the low air so you select that and you can either have it on it's saying vent now because the heating is off when the heating is on it will it will have two settings only um, eco and, and high to turn the heating off completely hold your finger on this button until it says off the toilet open up the toilet to use with that lever it opens up the bottom tank you press this button to flush when the uh, the pump is on the main pump will flush water around into the bottom tank when you've finished close it up and it's all sealed uh, 
that's the sink just open the tap and the water comes out um, the refrigerator um, on and off button is just there press that button and it powers up the fridge and you can select it either to run off of mains electrics gas or 12 volt to run from the 12 volt it will only run when the engine is is running it will not work at any other time which is why it is alarming we're plugged into mains electric so i've selected mains electrics to adjust the temperature you press this button and adjust the temperature to switch it off hold the button in and it switches off in this locker above you have your fire extinguisher and you have a tube there which is for your table the table is stowed behind the seat and the socket in the floor at the rear um, is for the table leg using the gas oven when you're using the gas oven always have the lid in an upright position you have three gas rings turn them on press them in press the igniter and they light and that's off the oven and grill has dual controls this way is for the grill press it in and ignite it that's the off position and the opposite direction is for the oven so when you want to light the oven press that in and light it there there's a little heat shield there which you need to pull out when you're using the grill it saves the heat from the controls um, opening the roof lights um, there's a button that you press in which holds the bar in place you have to press that in to release this bar and you pull it down and towards you it opens up the roof light to close it just push it back and make sure the bar locates past the button safety button that will hold it in place the blinds always use two hands on these and they will work more efficiently the window catches you push a button in to release those and there are securing um, thumb screws here when you open the window to secure it into place do both of them at the same time Remember to release them before you lower the window, otherwise you will overstrain these. Um, a little safety tip on opening these back doors. When you open them, um, be careful because the wind may take the doors. So if you hold the door back to this position, if the wind blows the door to this direction, uh, which my colleague will show uh, when he comes around the wind could possibly take this door far back and it will um, it will meet with the light and it will possibly damage the light so you just need to be aware of that it will stay that in that position but if it's really windy you just need to be wary of this Using the canopy, first of all, we need to decide whether it's safe to wind it out. If it's a windy day, do not wind it out. 
once you've got it wound out uh, and the conditions change or you leave the vehicle for any period of time then it's always best to wind it in otherwise if a wind catches it it will damage it okay so close this door first adjust the winding handle it's located into this socket wind it out to the desired distance The support legs are located in the front here, which are spring loaded. We need to compress this end piece to release it and then gently drop it down. We have a lever here, which is mounted there. So you release that to this centre position when it's loose. Adjust the height required. And then this lever clamps up there. The lever will feel like it's bending, but that is how it was designed. It will not snap. So to release that, pop it into the mid centre position. Gently reposition the leg, compress the end so that it releases and locates into the holder. You can wind it out further, uh, but you know it all depends how much you want to wind it out. It depends on yourself.